your glory on our face. We're looking to the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord. Unveil our eyes, cause you're
hands are dirty. Over all he reigns 
time God's good. Hallelujah. Where my life is part 17, I can't believe I've preached 17 messages on Elijah, but I know that God has been trying to give us faith. He's built our faith. He's encouraged our faith. I know he's restored my faith and given me a greater, deeper faith. And through these messages, God's been moving. And you know what? The devil don't like it. Anita, did you bring those emails? We'll do it later. You got it? Oh, will you come read that? I don't know why. I just really feel like we're supposed to do that. Y'all hang on for one second. About six weeks ago, the Lord really began to burst some stuff in my spirit. And I had some people come to me and they give me a word. And I, I'm so glad I sent it to Anita. Because if I wouldn't have sent it to her, I wouldn't have had it. Because I have to do, I get so many emails that I and, and text messages that I go through and delete them. They just God, I got stuff everywhere. And I, uh, this week, Wednesday, Wednesday night, I shared my heart with the congregation. I told them that I was very frustrated. I'll just go and tell. I was very frustrated because of the commitment in the church and things that's going on. And, and it was the devil heaping on it. Some of it was true. Some of it was the devil. But I couldn't understand why, you know, we preached the word, we got awesome worship, and why we wasn't just busting out the seams and growing and things wasn't going away. I, I felt like I felt like six or eight weeks ago the revival was moving and the spirit of God was moving and, and so, you know, we tend to forget sometimes what God tells us. Y'all ever done that? Yeah. And so I was forgetting about the promises that God had made. And, so uh, Anita and a couple other people in the church sent me some powerful messages, but I, I wanted her, if you will, to, to expand on that. Read that for me, please. Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, the, the week that he sent this was actually the very Sunday morning that the Holy Spirit moved so strong over this church. But it's not an easy word. It's actually a hard word. And when he sent it to me that morning... I was like, okay, God, that was not the message I expected because that was the Sunday our youth was supposed to um, share their testimonies about what all had happened while they were at the ramp. And so this uh, just goes in. We were talking back and forth about the service, and he said, I'm going to send you a text I got this weekend, and this is it. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God, who raises the dead. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 9. People may tell you that God will never give you more than you can handle, but don't listen. It's not true. You will often find yourself in situations that require more faith, more perseverance, more love, and more wisdom than you have on your own. And when you find yourself in this situation, you will realize how much you need God. In fact, you'll be desperate for Him. The truth is you were just as desperate for God before you found yourself in this place. You just didn't realize it. Sometimes you need to be shaken so that you can see your sin or your self-reliance. Then you can repent of this sin and become more God-reliant. It is not a sign of weakness to depend on God. It is a sign of spiritual strength to live day by day in recognition of your utter dependence on God. Now that one was sent to him earlier in the weekend. And I think this next one was sent to him the, that morning, that Sunday morning. And this is the one that really rocked me. Um, because like I said, that wasn't an easy word necessarily. Because you don't ever want to hear that you're about to go into a place that is more than you can physically handle. And yet, um, that, this is where our church is being taken to. But this explains why. And it's because God wants to know how bad we want Him. Here's the second and the one that came to mind this week. Uh, okay, so this is the one that came to my mind this week as I was praying over Pastor Scott and over our church. Uh, because, you know, Wednesday night, Pastor Scott was just broken. If you've heard him preaching for the past few weeks, You've, you've, you're hearing his heart and how frustrated he's been 
because here we go through weeks where the Spirit of God is moving so strong and we're desperate for God to do something in this church that's been prophesied over and over and over again that God's going to do something through this church. And yet when we think we're getting to that point, we don't even, I mean, we're a hundred people shorter than we were this time last year. And so you question God, what? What is this? Is it, is it, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, God, you know, the spirit moved. Are people really not hungry for your spirit so much so that they leave? And, and, and that word was that there's going to be a shakening, and we are seeing that. And I believe we're seeing a weeding out and a cleansing. And, and the thing that kept coming to my mind that I don't know that he can relate to, but when I clean out my closet in my bedroom, it my whole entire house gets disrupted <laughs> because I'm cleaning it out. And so it looks way worse in the midst of working in it. Yep. Can anybody relate? <laughs> and yes. And so it, it just looks worse. And I, I told him Sunday night, I said, I, I'm just praying that that's what it is. And it would not leave me. But then God brought this word to remembrance. Hey, Pastor Scott, good morning. I hope you're doing good. While praying for the church, I got a word for you from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty of Israel says. This is his word. The Lord of Israel. His word. Not some man's word. I don't even know who sent this text to Pastor Scott. There will be a period of trial for your church to see how much they really want me to come. There will be adjustments made that will surprise people. There will be silence and shouting. There will be joy. There will be sorrow. My choice of coming down to stay is not made yet. There will be times of testing for spoken words. Meditation is key. Find yourself a silent place where we can talk. Seek my face with all your strength, and I will show myself to you. Prepare for words you need to hear. My promises are yes and amen. 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 Our church has come through a time of testing, and it's because he wants to see if we're really hungry for him. I told Pastor Scott, I thought it was really important that the church hear these, these texts that came through because of what I hoped is that it would give you direction in how to fight, that it would bring you to a realization that we, we're, we're in a trial. And it, personally, it's a trial I don't want to pass. I don't want God to do mighty things. Not just in our church, but in each and every individual life. And more importantly, he wants to do that. But he wants to know that we want him. Oh, okay. I got, a, I got another one I want her to read that I got this morning. Which and, was pretty amazing yeah. after we've talked about the things that we've talked about. And I'll be honest with you, whoever sends me to see me, I don't even know who it is. That I don't even know who it, who it is that sends this right here. I, I don't want to know. I, I could call the number because the number comes up, but it don't have a name. But I don't want to know. I love it like this. And listen to this right here. The parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. But while they slept, an enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Verse 25. Uh, that's in parentheses. This is something you can count on any time you are a productive, positive, and powerful individual with massive amounts of potential in you. Tares are going to be planted in your life. This tear didn't just come up. It was planted. The moment the enemy saw that God was going to use you, he began to plant things to abort what God was going to do. Just when you thought things were about to really be productive, that's when it all happens. Just when you thought this is what I've been praying for, expect all hell to break loose in your life. Uppercase letters. In fact, that's a sign you're coming into your season. 
sometimes just happens as a, uh, some things just happens as a setup for God to show Himself strong in your life. I believe that God allows us to be to get into trouble just so He can show you how strong He is in getting you out. What was that we read at the very beginning about uh, desperate situations? He said, My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Pray with me. I'm talking about getting on our knees together. And then He said, Got this text this morning. So, God's speaking. And we've got to listen, yes. and we've got to act upon it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I really believe the Lord wanted us to read that so that you can know what's going on. Because I told the church Wednesday night, well, I've been in a fight. I'm, I'm serious. I told, I, I told the congregation Wednesday night that I've been praying whether or not I was supposed to even stay at the church. I mean, that's how strong of a fight I've been in and a spiritual battle that I've been in. But once I, once I got these texts back and I started remembering God's promises, then I realized it was the devil trying to come in and to be a distraction. Y'all think that y'all the only ones that get distracted. Good Lord, have mercy. I'm as human as anybody, and I bleed, bleed red, and it hurts when you pinch me. You know, I'm not some superhuman that's got a big Jesus tattoo on my chest. Uh, so I know that God's moving. I know that God wants to move. But I believe it's, it's dependent upon how bad we want it. And if we really want to see God move or if we just want to have church. Go ahead. I'm sorry, but I've got to say one other thing that came. Say it loud. As I was praying that I believe during this season we are to hold up his hands just like they did for Moses during Amen. 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 Thank you. That's right. Amen. I, and, and I told the church, I don't, this ain't no pity me party. This is a this is a real deal. Wanting God to move, pray for revival for years. I mean, I want to see God move as bad as anything. But I know that the devil don't want to see God move, and so he starts distracting. He starts using things that bother you. I'm a people person, and so when attendance starts dropping, we we've only had that happen a couple of times. I mean, we usually stay pretty good, but attendance start dropping a little bit, and I start looking at myself, and I'm wondering to myself, is it me? I mean, if it's me, God, get me out of here. That's what I told him. I'm straight up, because I don't want to be where he don't want me to be, and if I can't take the church where he wants to go, then I said, just get me out. Uh, last Sunday morning, I, I come right down this aisle right here, and I got to about where Jacob is, and I told the Lord, I said, you want me to resign today? I mean, that's where, that's where I was at. So I want you to understand that we're in a spiritual battle. And God is moving by His Spirit, but sometimes we just don't feel it. I love it when you feel it. I felt it yesterday morning. I felt it today. it has been three weeks I've been in here, and I've been just pushing through, pressing through, praying, seeking God, and, and just trying to get an answer. Y'all ever been there? See, some of you there now. You heard what the word said. It said that, and I, I might preach this today, and I might preach it next week, probably next week, but it's all good. You heard the word, and it said that God will not, you've heard people say, God will not put more on you than you can bear. The reason that's not true is because God wants us to depend on Him. If we can bear everything that we go through, we don't need God. And so some of you have been going through a really tough time. Physically, financially, spiritually, whatever. You've been struggling, man. You've been going through this tough time, and you did like me, and you start wondering, what is it? What am I doing wrong? What, what have I done? Where have I missed it? You know, what have I messed up somehow? And, and it's not that you've messed up something. God just wants you to, to see that you got to depend on Him. It ain't in our strength. It's in His strength. And so He puts this stuff or allows this stuff to come on us so that we can get our eyes open. Because if not, we walk around like most people are, like a bunch of zombies, spiritual zombies, and ain't going after the things of God. Because if we don't ever go through a tough time, we don't ever pray. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Don't look at me like that. Y'all get ready to get me fired up. I'm preaching to the church. I ain't preaching to two people in here. Y'all know that we don't pray near as much until we got a bunch of junk going on. And when we got junk going on, boy, we quick to get on our knees. And I'm just as gifted as you are. Yep. Come on, Amen? Amen. But God's saying if you really want to move with God, and, and when I say a move of God, I'm talking about a move of God that we don't orchestrate. He does it. And then it saves people in this church. It saves family members in the church. It saves people outside the church. See, people don't want to come to the church because they don't see no power. They don't see God moving in the church. Why do they want to come? So what we're talking about when we say a move of God, we're talking about God transforming our lives, man. Where, where He's first. And not everybody else is first. 
The C word. Commitment. You don't see it in the church no more. Used to, man. People were so faithful to the church. Now church is on the back burner. But church is where you're supposed to get your spiritual food. Church is where your kids need to be to get their spiritual food. I'm going to go ahead and preach it. Some of you never come to Sunday school. Your kids, that's 52 times in a year that your kids can hear more about Jesus than ever in Sunday school. You ain't going to let them miss 52 stinking days of school, are you? Well, <laughs> God wants to move. But we got to get serious about this thing. We got to, we got to start praying. I'm going off for a week. I've got me a couple, I don't like to read. I got me a couple books on the Holy Spirit. And buddy, I'm gonna get jammed up. I need it. I need a refreshing. I need to get soaked in the Holy Ghost, if you know what I'm talking about. And some of you need the same thing. And listen, don't worry about this and that and how it happens and all that. That's, that's where I get caught up sometimes. Worry about how is it going to happen. I don't care how it happens. I just want God to move. And God wants us to be serious about our relationship with Him. Listen here. We are going through times and getting ready to go through some times where if you ain't filled with the Spirit of God, you're going to get run all over spiritually. God wants to have an intimate relationship. He gives us the Holy Spirit so we can have an intimate relationship. Some of you keep going around and around and around and you get beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up because you ain't learning your lesson. You ain't learning how to fight. The Bible says in, in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18, he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. He said, when you've done all, to stand. That don't mean just stand up. It means to get right back in the fighting position because you're getting ready to fight again. What's going on in the church is you get hit a couple times and you just quit. You ever seen that big bully in school? You pop him one time real hard and he just he quit. He's a, he's a, he's a wuss. <laughs> but he had a big voice. But once you pop him one good time, he shut up and leave you alone. That's what some of y'all need to do with the devil. He's a wuss. And some of y'all need to pop him upside the mouth with the word of God and he'll leave you alone. Quit getting your tail whooped all the time. You know why some of you don't come to church all the time? Because you get beat up every time you come in here. Because you've been living the way you know you ain't supposed to be living. And you come in here and I just preach the word. It's just the word. It ain't me. And it beats you up. And so you say, well, I'm going to take a couple weeks off, man. i got to heal up. <laughs> no, you don't need to heal up. You need a man up, a woman up. And start focusing on what Jesus would have us to do. Amen? Do, do, we, do we just come to church to come to church? I've been here almost 11 years. And man, I've seen God do some awesome things. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I've seen so many people leave this church. It ain't even fun. If everybody was in this church that's come to this church since I've been here, we'd have to have six services. And you want me to tell you the truth? There's very few of them. There's some. There's very few of them that are even in church, going to church and serving the Lord in the church. Very few. And I wonder what in the world. I go to a funeral, somebody I know, there's more people that used to go to the church than go to the church. And so I start questioning, God, what, what, what is going on? And I just don't, I believe what Anita is saying is true. But every time somebody leaves the church or people leave the church, the preacher always gets up and says, well, the Lord's doing a shaking. I believe he is. But I just didn't want to take that for granted and say it just because it sounds good and don't make me look bad. I want to make sure there wasn't nothing going on with me. And I can promise you this, that God has been giving me every single message I preach. He's messed me up. It's unbelievable what he's done and how he's done it. And and. I know he's going to set all y'all down. I hope he sets everybody for the last 11 years down. And he's going to show you how much he helped me. I'm telling you, God has been my source and my strength. He's the one that's done everything. He's orchestrated everything. And I almost let the devil get in my head and mess me up. So if he can do it to me, you know he can do it to you. That's why the Bible says to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We need each other. Amen. You know why most preachers leave a church? You know how many people leave a church every month? 3,000 preachers a month leave a church. 
3,000 preaching a month leave a church because to be honest with you, most of them ain't got the backbone to say, hey, I've messed up. I need help. I need your prayer. No, they want to try to tough it out themselves and make it themselves. I'm glad I ain't that done. I need y'all. I need this church. I need the members of this church, and I need you guys to be faithful. I know that some of you work, and I know some of you got stuff going on, but the truth of the matter is you know, and I know you ain't committed. Amen? And yet your commitment's not to me. Your commitment's to God. I told the church Wednesday night, I was so naive when I first came here. I thought I'd never have a divorce in the church. I'm a man of God. I'm a preacher of truth. People's going to listen. I never going to have a divorce. Yeah, it lasted about six months. Shut up, this six months. Could be me. You see what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I want everybody to get it. Because when, when I got saved, I'm telling you the gospel truth. When I got saved, nobody didn't have to hold my hand. Nobody didn't have to beg me to come to church. Nobody didn't have to ask me to volunteer. I volunteered for everything. Me and my wife have served in every capacity of a church that you can think of. Before I became a preacher. So I'm just telling you. I, I want you. I believe this service today. I got a word. I'm giving you this word. I believe the Lord wanted to speak this to this church. Not just Wednesday night, because most of them are the ones that are faithful ones. I ain't hear nothing in here. <laughs> Listen to me. God has given each person in this room gifts and talents and abilities. We are called the body of Christ. Some of you are pinky, some of you are nose, some of you are ear spiritually, some of you are whatever. Some of you to tell. The society of the body of Christ is good because every part works together. And when one part of the body's not working together, you smash your little finger, you ain't going to worry about nothing else on your body but that little finger. You might not hardly ever use that thing, but you smash it real good and you need it. And it's the same way in the body of Christ. And then there's so many people in the body that's not functioning the way they're supposed to function, not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that's why the body of Christ suffers. That's just the truth. Like it, lump it, fall out the bed and bump it. It don't matter. That's the truth. And what we need to do is, what I want you to do, what I'm challenging you to do today is, as a church member of New Vision Ministry, when every single one of you come to my new members class, and when you sit down, one of the things that I talked to you about was commitment, faithfulness to the church. And when you signed up, you said you was going to tithe, you said you were going to be faithful to the church, you said you was going to love on people and pray for you, you said all these things. Well, you ask yourself, are you doing what you said you was going to do? Are you holding your end of the bargain? Because you didn't make that promise to this church. You made that promise to God. And if you ain't holding up to your end of the bargain, that's on you. Amen? Y'all good? God wants to use you. God loves you. God made you different than anybody else. Praise God he didn't make a one of me. One and a half. What's that was that? One and a half of me. Praise God, she got a little bit of her mama. Y'all would all be going crazy right now if she did. God wants to use you. See, the devil wants to tell you you're no good, you're never going to amount to anything, and you don't have anything to offer. You have something to offer to God. Offer. David said, I will not offer you anything that costs me nothing. And listen to me now. Listen to me. Listen to me. Most people in the church only offer God what's convenient to them. They don't want to offer him anything that's going to cost them anything. I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about everything. We offer him what we want to give, what we think is okay, what we think ain't going to make us do very much. And that's not what David said. David said, I will not offer you anything that don't cost me. The church, is, the church has got to the place to where they want to come in and they want you to feed them and they want you to leave I think it was Kendall said the other night. She made a statement that somebody come in and said, I finally found a church that I can go in, I can sit down, I can listen to the message and leave and not have to do anything. That's a poor individual. That's a poor individual that don't want to do anything for the kingdom of God. Jesus loved the church so much, he died for the church. And we're supposed to love this church. This is our house. We're family. We are a family. We're supposed to be a family. So I'm just telling you, the head of this family, I'm calling for revival. 
I'm calling for a move of God. I'm calling, I'm calling for God to transform all of our lives so that we will do what He asks us to do and get busy doing it. The fourth thing in our mission statement, the first is to love those that no one else loves. Second one is to reach those that others deem unreachable. Look around our church. We've hit, we've done pretty good. Don't tell me that. Some of y'all were not lovable. I wasn't very lovable. Reach those others deemed unreachable. I was deemed unreachable. Some of you were deemed unreachable. Amen. Some of you still acting like you're unreachable, but we still loving you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? To equip the saints to do the work of the gospel. You need to. When I, I, I shouldn't have to do all the equipping in this room. It should be done in Sunday school and youth and all that. It is. But I'm just saying, you should hear the word of God on Sunday morning. When you go out, you should tell it to everybody. Amen. If I'm not preaching good enough for you to remember and remind somebody, either I'm wrong or you're spiritually dead. Look at your neighbor and say, are you dead? Are you spiritually dead? Jesus says he'd make us alive. We're supposed to be alive. A live wire. This guy came up to me and grabbed me yesterday. He said, it was at the graveside. And I did, I got wound up yesterday. I was fired up. I've been in the presence of the Lord. I was jacked up and wired up. I thought we're all up. That little bitty platform couldn't hold me. I'm about to go. And this man come up at the graveside. I never met him before. He come up and introduced himself. He's real proper. He had a nicer suit than I had on. And I did notice his car, Mercedes Benz. Sweet. I didn't lust after it. I got my truck. I'd rather have a truck. <laughs> but he come up and he grabbed me by my arm. He said, young man, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, yes, sir. He said, I just want to tell you. He said, I'm Catholic. He said, I don't never get to hear nothing like that. He said, I sure enjoyed that. I said, praise God. Praise God. He got encouraged. He got checked, didn't he? But if you was in that room yesterday, hell was hot. Heaven sweet and hell's hot. That's the way we need to make it. People's comfortable, man. See, God don't want us to be comfortable. He wants us to love each other. He don't want us to get comfortable in ourselves. Amen. I, I've done it, man. I'm guilty. You know, I've repented. Man. I've told the Lord, you know, I, I get I get frustrated. Somebody told me the other day, said, don't get stressed out. I don't get stressed a lot. I get frustrated. Because nobody had to hold my hand. Nobody had to baby me. When I did ministry, I did ministry not because Pastor Bill came and said anything to me. Pastor Bill, did. I told the church Wednesday night, Pastor Bill very seldom ever come and told me how you did a great job. He, he never did that stuff, not because he didn't appreciate it. He just didn't do it. I didn't do it for him. I did it for God. So when you got a ministry and God's called you to ministry, do it with all your heart. You're supposed to be cleaning tables out there and taking care of babies. Minister and love on the kids. Pray for them while you got them in your arms. Don't be thinking, hey, these church kids, they crazy. They worse than anybody I've ever seen. What's wrong with these kids? <laughs> no, man. Speak life into our kids. Speak life into them. I'm the world's worst at getting upset about people not coming. I'm just telling you the truth. I can't stand to see empty seats. I can't, I can't. It bothers me. I don't like to see empty seats. And I've always tried to hang my hat, so to speak, on not worrying about numbers. Well, boy, the last six weeks, the devil's whooped my butt with that one. And then people come up, Pastor, don't worry about the numbers. He's like, God's got who he wants you. No fooey on that. I'm a shepherd. I'm supposed to take care of every sheep, not some of them. And when I got sheep that come in here and they leave, it bothers me. Now, some preachers don't give a rat's behind I do. I care about everybody that walks in the doors. And I want to try to help them. If I've done something to make them mad or hurt them or do something, then I want to try to make it right. So God wants to move. He wants to use you. Are you going to commit or not? If you don't want to commit, I'll be honest with you. I'll take a letter of resignation from you if you want to give it to me. It don't matter. If you don't believe in this church and you don't want, want to serve in this church and you just want to come in, plop up, and plop down, then don't be a member of the church. And like I say, I understand some work, have a lot of stuff to do. But a part of being the church is serving in the church. And not only serving in the church, but bringing people to the church. 
We have the answer. We have the answer. Why are, you, why are we not bringing people? I know some of you like people, but you know we can do a whole lot better at that too, couldn't we? How many of y'all can do better at witnessing? How many of y'all can do better than inviting people to church? How many of y'all are going to make a commitment today to God, not to Pastor Scott, that I'm going to start doing a better job? You challenge me today, and I'm going to do a better job. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, booy on you. You're the reason I'm preaching this. You didn't raise your hand because you got authorized, that's fine. Come see me at the church and I'll repent. <laughs> you know what the title of my message was? Why well, sit we here until we die? I guess I'll preach it next week. Why sit we here until we die? Why do you just want to come to church and sit down, get beat up, or whatever you want to call it, and then just leave? <laughs> At least while you get beat up, do something. Hey, maybe some of you wouldn't get beat up as much if you volunteered and you've done some things outside of here. You wouldn't get beat up three times a week, I mean a month instead of four. That's another way to look at it, ain't it? Well, if I ain't in there, you can't get on to me, so I'll go out here and take care of the kids and love on the kids. <laughs> Y'all funny, you know that. I want to challenge you this week. Think about what you're supposed to be doing for God. Think about what you're supposed to be doing in this church. Do you know that the Bible teaches that God's first, your family's second, your church is third? Most of you got, well, I ain't going to tell you what most of you got. You know what you got. But we ain't got them in order. We ain't got them in order. So let's get them in order. I challenge you. It, it, it's, it's good for you. It's good for your children. It's good for your family. To get them in order. Does your kids know what's important to you? Yeah. They know whether church is important to you or not. It, it's always blown my mind how I've had people tell me, well, I can't come to Sunday school because I can't get my kids up. <laughs> Boy, the spirit of slap jumps all over me. Please don't use that. Think of another excuse. Don't use that. Because you get your kids to school by 7.30. And you can't give them to church by 10 o'clock. Can I just be honest with you? That's bad parenting. Get mad at me if you want. Oh, they got to have some sleep. No, they don't. They don't sleep when they stay up off speaking and not playing PlayStation, and Xbox, and everything else, do they? Well, some of y'all look like prunes today. Come on, smile. It's okay. Trying to, trying to encourage you a little bit. Give you a little bit of a kick at the same time, but I'm trying to encourage you. Hey, this is good for me. Th those who've been here for 11 years, I used to have been jumping up on the chairs, throwing stuff at you. <laughs> Not that bad. Um. <laughs> Some of you say, well, I'm, 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 I've done reached my, my prime, and I'm, I mean, I'm having my prime, and you know, it's time for other people to, to step up. No, it ain't. You don't never, re you don't never retire in God's kingdom. Amen. If you've retired at this church, then you're wrong. There's no retirement. Now, I know some of you can't do as much as you used to do. Some of y'all used to do everything here, and it's time for other people to step up. But you can do something. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you can do something. Do it like, say it like I said, do something. <laughs> some of y'all have been wanting to talk country your whole life. I'll just let you. That's best from city slang right there. Hey, we're in this together. We're in this together. I really, listen to me, I really appreciate those of you that prayed for me. I know that God laid me on a lot of your hearts. And my wife prayed for me. My, my <coughs> wife talked to me. My wife tried to encourage me. I mean, I was frustrated. I, 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 I mean, I'm just telling you the truth. I love this church. I mean, love this church. I love the people in this church. I don't ever want to leave this church. I know that's bad news for some of y'all, but I don't ever want to leave this church. And God knows that. I mean, knows that. But I was to the point two weeks ago where I was ready to leave. If that's what he wanted, I was ready to leave. So I want you to know my heart. I'm here for you, but I want you to be here for me. I'm not trying to put a pity me party on anybody, but when we have past appreciation, 
Wasn't hardly nobody here. Didn't hardly nobody stay. That don't make you feel really appreciated. So I want you to remember that. If I ever do leave, yeah, pastor appreciation. Show up for your pastor. Well, I don't like to eat the food. I don't, well, don't eat the food. Just sit there and shake my hand, say I love you, and just talk for a little bit. Amen. See, all this stuff coming about, you know, we, we had Maddox. I was worried about Maddox. I, I was praying for Maddox. And, you know, we, we have some other stuff going on. And Tommy's son and then past appreciation. Nobody showed up. I mean, the devil just really knows how to plant taters yeah. to get you. And I, and I thank you guys for praying for me. I know that God laid you on my heart. I, I've got intercessors in this church. I know I do that pray for me, and I, I appreciate it. And I'm a whole lot better, man. I'm excited about what God's going to do. I'm ready for another 10 years. I know some of y'all are going to quit today because of that. <laughs> but it's all good. If Jesus tarries, I'm here. I'm committed. I'm committed to you, and I want you to commit to the church, to God. Amen? I feel a whole lot better. Y'all feel better? Good. Let's stand. If you visit today, I do preach. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what, you won't find a church nowhere around here any different. We all got our problems. We all got our issues. Every single one of them. There's not a preacher that I've met and talked to that don't have issues, that don't have problems getting people to serve. A lot of them say, well, it's the time in, in the age that we live in. Well, I, I believe we can change that. Amen? I believe we can change that. We all commit. If you wait to get perfect to do something, that ain't going to happen. God wants you to step out in faith. If you call to do it, step out in faith. He'll meet you there. He'll do it. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We give you praise for this morning. I thank you for this church. I do thank you for this church, Lord. It's an honor to pastor this church. And Lord, I just pray for the spirit of commitment to be on this church. I pray that we'll all look deep inside of ourselves and ask, ask ourselves the question, am I committed? <laughs> am I part-time or am I committed to my church? Because the truth is, this is your church. This is your church. God wants you to be planted and bloomed in a local church. And this is your church. This is where you say that God has brought you. So please pray about what he'd have you to do. Tons of stuff going on. You may not get to do what you want to do right off. And the truth of the matter is you may be called to do something. And the Lord will make you wait just like he did me. But in that waiting, I was busy. I was working. Think about this, a waiter that waits on tables at a restaurant. They'll come around and they'll check on you. They'll get your order and everything. But after that, if they just leave and never come back and never, never top your tea off or give you any water and never check and see if you need anything, you ain't going to really want to give him that good of a tea party. And kind of the same way with us. The Bible says those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Waiting on the Lord means coming back and saying, Lord, what else you want me to do? What else you want me to do? I may not be doing exactly what I want to do right now. Even what I'm, my destiny is for me to do. But my purpose right now is to do this. So I'm going to do it the best I can until this door opens. Whatever it is that God's calling you to do, do it. You say, Pastor Scott ain't calling me to do Anything. Well, we got plenty for you to do. He ain't calling you, we're going to call you. God, help us to be about our Father's business. Jesus, at 12 years old, said, I must be about my Father's business. God, help us to be about your business. If you're in this room this morning, you don't know the Lord, He's the greatest. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. If you're in this room and you're backslid, and this message has challenged your heart. Maybe you're not backslid so much on the Lord, but maybe you backslid on what you, what you need to be doing, and you know that. And I want you to renew your commitment to the Lord this morning. Right now. Maybe you really have never gotten involved in anything at the church. Get involved somewhere. 
might not be on the praise team. It might not be teaching Sunday school. Get involved somewhere. Work your way in. The Bible says your gifts will make room for you. There's a lot of gifts and talent. You know, the message that said when you have great potential, when God's getting ready to really use you, the devil's going to come in and try to really mess things up. He's going to sow tears and try to mess things up. Some of you are there now. You've got great potential. God really wants to use you. But the devil's come in and you're letting those tears mess you up and pull you away and abort the plan of God in your life. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Get busy working for the Lord. If you're willing in this place to make a new commitment to the Lord, to make a new commitment to this church, then I'm going to ask Lord to sing a verse. You can come down here if you want. You don't have to. If you're not saved and you need to be saved, please, by all means, we want to we wanna help you. We want you to be saved. But if you're willing to make a new, fresh commitment to the Lord, and you're willing to be like David and say, Lord, I'm not going to offer you anything that don't cost me nothing, instead of it just being comfort or being what we want to do, we're willing to do whatever he asks us to do. If you're willing to recommit yourself, I want you to do that as she sings this verse right here. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When the weight of your life begins to fall. Thank you, Jesus. On the name of Jesus, I will call. For I know my God is in control. And his purpose is in shape of Doesn't matter what I feel, doesn't matter what I see, my hope will always be your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free, my hope will always be. Your promises to me. As I walk into the days to come, I will not forget what you've done. For you have supplied my every need. And your presence is enough for me. Doesn't matter what I feel, doesn't matter what I see, my hope will always be your promises to me. Now I'm casting out all fear, for your love has set me free, my hope will always be. Your promises to me. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Lord. We commit to you afresh, Lord, to serve you, to trust you, and to do your will. Because the fourth thing in our mission statement that I left out is to be found faithful. Jesus comes back. Lord, I pray that every single one of us will be found faithful when you come back. You don't require the same thing from every one of us. Some you require a lot, some you don't require as much, but you require something from all of us. That's how the body works and functions. Everything's not used as much as everything. Some things are used more, some things less, but we're all used. Lord, I pray for a spirit of unity in this church. I know that you have brought people here from the north, south, east, and the west that's supposed to be here. I know even in the last six months, you've brought people here strategically to put them in this church. And I thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, as we move forward and we get ready to elect four new trustees, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you put the right people on the board that's supposed to be on the board, that they would, the right people would be serving in the leadership capacity of this church. 
And I pray for others in this church that have awesome talents and abilities. Some have tried to use them and we failed to use them in the right way. We've missed it. Lord, forgive us for that and help us to start over. Help us to plug every single person in to the area that they're supposed to be used in. There's, all, there's people in this room that are awesome at business. There's people that, that are prayer warriors. There's people that are great with kids. We go overseas to love on kids. And we need to love on kids here. There's, te- there's people that are great teachers, great communicators that need to be used in this church, Lord. So I pray as you raise them up, Lord, that you'd help us to plug them into the right areas. Give us discernment to know where to put people and place people, Lord. And I love you and I give you praise. Continue to move, Lord. Use us this week. Help us to take what we've learned today about tough times and, and, and how we're going to go through tough times, but it's to show us how much we trust and, and need to depend on you. So help us, Lord, as we go forward this week to be the men and women of God you've called us to be. We love you and we give you praise for everything in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody before you leave. Don't forget the fall festival tonight.